Welcome back to the Hit Bombs YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at my own golf swing over the last three years. I haven't posted much in the last few months on my own swing, so I wanted to get back to doing that. I'm gonna take you through some of the high points, the low points, and everything in between so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made in my own golf swing. Okay, so over the last three years, going back to 2021, when I personally think I was swinging it my best in competition, I was getting up to 155 miles an hour on a TrackMan, 225 ball speed with our old top flight long dry ball. Why we hit an inferior ball still blows my mind. Needless to say, I was moving it, playing good golf. And then shortly after, later that year, I ended up having a bad neck injury. I, I, I hate talking about this all the time, but I do feel there's some relevance. When that injury happened, I ended up having nerve damage down my left arm and my arm completely went dead. After I eventually came back from that injury, my awareness of my arm and how the club was loading was not there. And eventually I was able to get back to playing and swinging, but the mechanics definitely started to change. Now, fast forward to 2023, I had a, a phenomenal year competing, but I also wasn't swinging it the best. I felt a little inefficient, top end speed. There was a point where I did get up to 225, 226, but I wasn't holding that all year. I'd say for the majority of the year, I was hovering right around 217, 218, 219 with our current long drive ball. Knowing that I wasn't quite where I wanted to be, I started to go back through the timeline over the years and figure out, okay, what was it that I worked on in my swing that actually caused me to get a little bit worse? Yes, there was the injury, but what in the mechanics actually changed that I need to get back to? Over the last couple of months, I've been doing a lot of film study, looking at the two swings, and one of the areas that I've really locked in on was how the shaft is loading through the transition. So in the old swing, you can see that as I went to the top and I started to change direction, the wrist angles were getting much more acute in the downswing, so the shaft was getting closer to the right shoulder. In a new swing, you can see that there's a little bit of run on of the arms in the back swing. Okay, elbows collapse. And then as I change directions, the club shaft is actually getting wider. A lot of the people close to me in 2023, I, I referenced it, it felt like I was swinging with some type of resistance on, right? So what I mean by that is it just felt like I was working much harder than I was when I was swinging it super efficiently. And I knew this is something that needed to change because when we look at the best long drive on the planet, Kyle Berkshire, you can see how acute those wrist angles get in the early part of the transition, okay? So this is ultimately what I have identified as the first phase of lag. So that is what I'm trying to change. Now, we can take this a step further into the downswing, okay? So once you get that correct and look at Another point where I think lag is, is really important, okay? So if we get to the point where the butt end of the club is right outside the right leg, okay? You can see that the old swing had much more angle in there, okay? The new swing, or 2023, was the club head was much lower, okay? When we start to see that, that's a sign that the energy is letting out early, okay? So if you think about uh, if I was gonna punch someone, instead of standing tall, leaning into him and hitting him square, it's almost like I'm falling back and, and sort of glancing him, right? That's the correlation I would use when we see the energy let out early. And the reason this is important to look at is because you could have really good lag through the transition, but if we see that lower body slide and the upper body tip back, okay, those wrist angles will get thrown out. If I load the club correctly through the transition and then I do a good job keeping the upper body on top of the lower body, I'll be able to store that energy very late into the downswing, which will allow my hands to lead the way. And eventually I can get that energy to let out almost as if I was cracking a whip. Now, in order to solve this, I had to basically go through the timeline of what I was working on over the years, figure out, okay, what, what in the swing was I working on that had a negative consequence later in the swing, right? And sometimes this happens, right? Always in the, in the pursuit of trying to get better, you could be working on something, it could be going good, 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 and then at some point, it might take a turn, and now you're, you're worse than you were before, right? That's the crazy thing about golf. It's a very fickle game. So as I looked at that timeline, you know, obviously the injury was definitely a, a red flag, right? Anytime you get injured, it's a sign that your body's moving in an area that it doesn't want to move. So I kind of started to focus in on that point. And, and the, what I was working on was I was trying to add a little bit more lateral or left to right in my golf swing. Now, um, I say this 
I wasn't someone who had much lateral to begin with, okay? Growing up, I was taught to swing very centered. Even when I got into long drive, yes, I did have a little bit of lateral, but I wasn't someone who had as much lateral as like a Kyle Berkshire. And so as I was trying to work on this lateral, what it started to do was it actually started to change my trigger, okay? So getting into my setup, I was moving more to my left. And then as I shifted to my right, I got my little forward press in there. And what that was doing is as it was pulling my arm off the chest, I was then starting my body back. And you'll see that I was getting to left arm parallel on the backswing and my arm, my shoulder turn was actually completely turned, okay? So once I was getting turned too early, I was running out of room and that's where we started to see the arms collapse and sort of run on because the body was not pivoting, right? Once the body stops, the arms are gonna basically go where they wanna go. So I was getting a lot of body turn early with not much arm swing. And a lot of the physical therapists that I respect and I talk to and, and kind of try to learn more about the body, a lot of them talk about the importance of how the arms need to lead the rib cage, okay? And when I first heard this, I, I didn't quite understand how to put this into application because I'm someone that always likes to use my body or the bigger muscles as the median of the golf swing. But what they mean by that is as you're turning back, it's important that you don't leave the arms behind the torso, okay? The arms have to swing back at some rate as I'm turning so that all the tissue is getting loaded correctly, okay? So yes, the lateral, you know, I was able to create a little bit more energy or speed off the ball, but based off how it was affecting my trigger, it was, it started to negatively affect how that club was loading through the top of the swing. Now, I am happy to report that in the last few months, the swing is making some serious strides. I've been really hitting it good. Um, last long drive event, you can see the club shaft is getting much closer to the right shoulder as it did in 2021. So I'm very excited. Uh, don't get me wrong, it, it isn't 100% ingrained yet. It, there is some days where I don't feel as comfortable. And to get to this point, I had to focus on three things, okay? So the first thing was, in the takeaway, I wanted to make sure that one, I wasn't creating as much momentum off the ball. And two, I wanted to make sure that I was getting the club head started much faster, okay? Making sure that the arms are moving in, in conjunction with the body. Um, so it feels like, you know, almost in the backswing, I'm trying to shake someone's hand with my left hand, right? Almost like that, instead of there kind of being a delayed takeaway. So that's step one. Step two is I'm actually trying to feel a, a little bit more wrist set earlier in the swing. Once I got to a point where the arm started collapsing at the top, I, I lost a lot of the feeling in my wrist from a loading standpoint, okay? It, it felt very dead wristed. It, it felt like there was no way I could get any load uh, through that shaft and in the wrist. So I actually went back to a feel that I had as a kid by trying to hinge the club earlier, I started to actually get a little bit of feeling back in my wrist, okay? So it's club head back, hinge the wrist. Um, and if you would have asked me 12 months ago, I would have told you I never would have been um, setting the club earlier in my backswing. Um, but that's the funny thing about golf. I'm a big believer that I think uh, every drill could work for someone at a certain point in their, their career or their journey. The reason I don't like early wrist set is it typically affects the flow of things. When I'm saying I'm setting the club early, it's just a drill. When I actually go and hit balls, I don't think about that, okay? So it's important to, to note that. And the other thing that this wrist guide is doing is it's helping me be get, become aware of the pitch of the shaft at the top, okay? Now, as the arms went to the top and started collapsing, okay? What happens is when the arms collapse, you can see that it actually starts to lay the shaft off at the top, okay? Anytime we get a laid off shaft at the top and we start down, okay, what happens is it's gonna throw the club out, okay? So we're gonna see the wrist angles get thrown out. The club is gonna get a little bit steeper in the downswing. Um, and ultimately that's not a great recipe for speed. So actually had a, a friend that threw me on 3D and, and one of the things that we saw was was as I was getting to the top that that club shaft just before the downswing was actually tipping down this way. Okay, so I knew that was something that I needed to change, and it's something that uh, I don't think is is all the way there yet. But in conjunction with this club head moving and the wrist set, I'm trying to feel like as I get to the top, 
the club is working a little bit more across the line, okay? Almost as if the club at the top of the swing is running right through my head. Funny enough, watch the uh, episode on Bryson's channel with John Daly, and he talked about actually being able to see the club out of his left eye, okay? That was his cue as a kid. Once he saw that club, he knew he could start his downswing. Um, but for me, uh, when things started going south, I wasn't able to see that club, okay? Because instead of being here, it was back here and, and it wasn't in my peripheral vision. So that's kind of the, the sequence. For me, it feels like one move, but I sort of, uh, it sort of evolved from three different parts. And uh, let's hit some balls. I haven't hit some balls for you guys in a while. So I uh, also got my new Avoda irons, got the swing guide, which I, I'm in love with right now. So I kind of get in here, feel the club head move, a lot of wrist set. And then I'm trying to see the club out of my left eye at the top. Now the problem with the swing guide is you can't, you can't actually twirl the club. <laughs> so that's the only bad thing. Like I said, you know, when I'm, when I'm actually hitting drivers and I'm trying to go fast, I can't think about this set. It's something that I, I gotta more or less just throw the club back and hope that I get enough reps in with the drill that it slowly starts to move into my swing. Okay, so let's hit a few more. Club head moves, set. That's actually striped. So a little draw, okay? When the club starts getting too laid off at the top and I start down, I cut the ball, okay? Path gets too left, because like I said, the, the club is tipping out. Path goes left, I cut it. Uh, so that's one of the other benefits is, is by getting that club a little bit more across the line, um, I feel it helps control the path uh, into the ball much more neutral. Okay, let's do another one. That was stripe too. Now, one of the things on this swing guide, so if I set the club down, you can see I have the swing guide slightly angled to the right, okay? If you put it too much on top, what will happen is you'll get to the top and in order to get that on your wrist, the club face will get super open, okay? So I, I don't have it perfectly set, that's why it might not look right. Um, but that's why by having it slightly angled to the right, okay, as I move back and I try to hinge it, and then I go to the top, I can get a little bit of cup in that lead wrist, okay? And the club shaft and the face are perfect from there. Um, so yeah, let's hit one more, why not? Oh, little thin, but it felt good. Little draw. Um, so ultimately, that's sort of been the last three years of, of what I've been up to in my swing. I think that the overall lesson is, uh, you know, a lot of times you could start working on something that might work for other people, but it might not work for you. Always have a process in place, okay? Uh, collect data because when things go wrong in your swing, you need to have something that you could go back and help you troubleshoot. That's the biggest lesson in all of this. Now, if there's anything that I said that didn't make sense, or any questions you have, any other thoughts you have on my swing, any tips, leave a comment below. And um, I wanna be hitting more shots on the YouTube channel this year. I recognize it's something that I haven't done much of, so I got some ideas to maybe play some golf. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to do the usual, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It alerts you every time we release new content. And then check out hitbombs.com. We have a blueprint over there. We have virtual lessons. We have everything you need to get better from the comfort of your own home.